Welcome back. In the last video, we talked about Bitcoin and how it works. Today, we're going to talk about the technology that underlies it, blockchain. Understanding blockchain is the key to understanding how all these cryptocurrencies really work. As the name suggests, a blockchain really is just a chain of blocks. It may sound simple, maybe even moronic, but I'm going to prove it to you. Just watch. In this video, we're going to be talking about why we need blockchains, what a blockchain is, how blockchains work, and what they can be used for. Let's talk about how we send money to each other today. Right now, you probably use Venmo, or PayPal, or WePay, or just to send money to your friends. These companies are good in the sense that they keep your money safe and provide a useful service. But at the end of the day, they're still self-interested. No amount of glossy marketing should distract you from the fact that they're simply trying to maximize their own profits. Unfortunately, sometimes that's at your expense. We see this in the form of lengthy transaction times, high fees, and other red tape. But what other option do you have? You know where I'm going with this. Blockchain allows you to safely send money to your friends all without using a third party like a bank. The middleman is completely removed. That's a whole new ball of worms. Can of, that's a whole new can of wax. Sliced bread. But how can blockchain actually replace these services? What is a blockchain? To put it simply, a blockchain is a public distributed ledger. Okay, great guys. I think they probably got it. Video's done. So we'll take lunch now. All right, let's actually explain this. In the last video, we talked about ledgers, which are essentially lists of who owns what. The payment processors, like the ones I just mentioned, keep their own top secret ledger. Blockchain systems work a little differently. Imagine taking that one ledger and giving it to thousands of people all around the world. Each person maintains their own copy and checks it against everyone else's to make sure that no fraud is happening. This is all done using specialized computer software. So if I were to go into the ledger and give myself a million bitcoins, everyone else with a copy would know that transaction is fake and they'd think I'm a big jerk and they'd be right. And that hurts. To sum up, we've taken the private ledger and made it public. Blockchains are decentralized. The network is made up of completely unrelated individuals, and no one entity holds all the power. That's an important point. Blockchains are decentralized and global. Okay, so we have the main idea down. Now it's time to get literal. Like figuratively literal. In a literal way. In a figurative sense. You know. Now the question is, how does a blockchain actually work? Let's imagine we're using Bitcoin. In order to use it, you'll need an account on the Bitcoin blockchain. Your account will have two parts, a public key and a private key. Public keys are often called public addresses. The terms are a little wonky, but it works kind of like your email account. You share your email address with people so they can send you information, memes, spam, invitations to things you don't want to go to, etc. You share your public address with people so they can send you bitcoins. Your email address is like your public address. Now, let's talk about what it takes to send an email. To send an email, you have to be logged into your account using a password. You'd never give out your password to anyone because your password grants complete control over your account. Your private key is like your blockchain password. It's what allows you to send bitcoins. Once emails are sent, they can never be unsent. The same is true for cryptocurrency transactions. Now, your public address and private key will be a little different from your email address and password. Instead of corndogmonster11 at hotmail.com, your public address will be a long, random string of numbers and letters, and so will your private key. So imagine you're a plumber, and you want to buy some new plums for plumbing. But you're a hip plumber, so you use Bitcoin. What happens to that transaction? Well, your transaction is broadcasted to and received by each computer on the global blockchain network. Once your transaction is verified as non-fraudulent, people called miners come in and do the heavy lifting with fancy number crunching computers. Miners do two special things, both of which are extremely important. 
They take valid transactions and group them into what are called blocks, and then they add those blocks onto the official public ledger. Here's the thing. Actually adding a block to the official public ledger requires a great deal of energy and computational work. To find out why, check out our in-depth section on mining. So anyway, why would miners go through all that trouble and work just to add a block to the blockchain? It takes time, effort, and electricity. Well, when miners add a block to the blockchain, they are rewarded with newly generated bitcoins. That's the incentive. Mine a block, get some bitcoins. Here's an important point. Each block is permanently linked to the one that came before it, so that no one can go back in time and add a fake transaction. The blocks are so permanently linked that they're almost like an unbreakable chain. So a blockchain is just like a chain of blocks after all. Who knew? Well, I did. And now you do, you also do. Block plus chain equals blockchain. Let's recap. Blockchains are public distributed ledgers that thousands of people worldwide work to maintain and secure. Blockchain technology is what allows cryptocurrencies to work and exist in the first place. Without it, we'd have no Bitcoin. But guess what? Blockchain technology is useful for far more than just financial transactions and crypto. In fact, it can be used to store, verify, and send all kinds of information, not just financial data. And that's why people all over the world are so excited about this technology and why we're exploring so many new use cases for it. Before moving on, take the quiz below to test out your blockchain knowledge, and then move on to the next lesson, Ethereum 101. We'll see you there.